this is at Olden Hole. How fascinating is that? The deepest pothole in Derbyshire. Cave Dale's rammed. Once you get past that bit, there'll be nobody now. So it's head up. Cave Dale's just dry as a bone as well, which is uh, quite rare. So we're heading up over here until following the limestone way. Well, that's the top of Cave Dale. I got up all the way without stopping once, which is a big, a big win for me. Don't, don't you worry. It's awesome. I think they were DV, we were a bit lost. They got the map the wrong way around. <laughs> so they're a lot happier now. I don't know where they're going. Anyway, we're going to head up here now, following the limestone way. I want not to be up there today, mate. I'm tall. Is you can't see there's something for people. Horrendous, mate. There's a few people out today, bound to be on a day like this, but. Over these back rows, you don't show off as many. It's just chaos up there. Right, leaving the last home way now. That's Bradwell Moor Trig. We're heading to Eldon Hill over there. So we're going to follow this for a bit and then veer off to the left. There's a bit of entrepreneurship. A coffee shack in the middle of a field. <laughs> See these holes here, these are all disused lead mines. They're gonna go past one up here, it's a bit bigger. I think you can see on the top there, called Sliverstone Mine. I find that a little bit, but normally they're lead mines going back hundreds of years. Might even go back as far as the Roman times, some of them. But they were certainly been sort of 17th century and whatever. But yeah, it's a really cool little coffee wagon there. Good spot actually, right on the join of the paths coming over from Mam Tor and Castleton and the like. It's absolutely rammed today. Which is why I was going to go and drive over to Beely Moor, but I thought, stuff that. <laughs> yeah, unless you go up at about five in the morning, that would have been absolute chaos. So, uh, but yeah, stunning day. It's going to change tomorrow. I've been reading this book about the weather and just checking the clouds out, but at the moment, one of those are indicating bad weather on the way. So, uh, you know, we probably don't get out much notice until tomorrow morning, I think. I try the Aurora. I'm one of those that managed to miss the Aurora. <laughs> uh, well, came in from the pub and went straight to bed. Should have stayed up and gone out. Anyway, meant to be one tonight, but not quite as strong. But we might have to go out and drive out and see if we can capture that. Anyway, we'll carry on heading on towards Silverstone Mine. Lovely views here. You can see Kinder Scout in the background there. Got Mamtor just there. And then if you come round, you've got Derwent Edge. In the very distance, you've got Wind Hill here. That's uh, behind that, you've got Stanage Edge and the likes across there. And over here, you've got Brad Wilmore Trig Point, one of the Ethels. I did a video up there, I'll uh, put that up in the, at the end, but I did a, a similar walk around here oh, over a year ago now. But yeah, stunning. We should get some good views off Eldon Hill. This here is a Sliverstone mine. It's a disused mine, quite a big one when you look at all the spoil heaps and the holes. So I'll find out a bit more, but that's quite a significant site there, isn't it? Um, I'll find out the history of it, how long it went back to, but you can see all the holes and the dips, so it's clearly some sort of open cast type mine. Probably going back to the 17th century or earlier. The paragliders are out today. So we're going to head up here, you can just see in the distance, there's Olden Hill. For the old track, this I suspect it's probably for the mines and the quarries. 
you see it goes all the way into the distance uh, all the way down towards Bradwell and Brough so you know this would have been used for the mines and the quarries to get all the get all the uh, ore and stone out a bit more of the mine here on the left look amazing stuff isn't it this used to be a hive of activity all this area see all the small heaps here even more so now but we're now over there in a the distance so yeah I'll find out about that and also the quarry. The quarry is meant to be quite a good site of, uh, I think it's an SSSI now. I don't know how many SS that was, but it's meant to be three. So, uh, yeah, we'll see if we can uh, have a look at that or not on, on our wanderings. <laughs> I have forgotten my three quid. So I don't think I'll be able to get to Giant's Hole because you have to pay a three quid permissive fee because it's on private land. So I think we'll do Elden Hole. And we'll go back over maybe down when it's past and brave out something of that nature some uh, more holes here and uh, looks like rabbits have made the home in that uh, heap there that's a hell of a slab isn't it look at that cool that's uh, some different dry stone wall then. still walking across this huge it's huge this mine it's right all the way down there and we're all the way up here so uh, we're going to cut over there in a minute, I think, on the bottom of Elden Hill to Elden Hole and then up to the top and then we'll stop for some lunch, I think. Sounds about a right time to do it, doesn't it? Looks like some old quarry workings there. We can follow this farm track round to the right, which will get us in the right direction. Very little lamps. They're not very old, are they? The uh, peak forest down there, we're just following this contour line now over to the Elden Hole. Well, that's peak forest, We've got Bradwell Trig. All of this, all of this used to be royal forest called the Peak Forest, which was a hunting ground for the kings. Peveril Castle was like a, the administrative sort of centre for that forest to make sure people weren't poaching, taking timber, and all that without paying the dues or getting fined. So it's amazing to think how much of this land was just royal forest but that retains the name peak forest and then, I, then back along there towards uh, Duff Holes and Chapel on the Frith I think that might be Duff Holes over there actually and the A6 and then that's Coombs Moss yeah Coombs Moss shining tall where we were last time I was out yeah beautiful views Got a, just a bit of cirrus cloud in the in the sky but that's it but we'll carry on over here now to the pothole yeah, these are all old lead mines again, or quarries. You can see where they're just spore heaps where they took it all up in a big line. That leads me to think it probably is a lead mine or something. They're probably just following the seam through here. See Elden Hole just there, so we're not far away now. So, this is Elden Hole. Basically, this is the deepest pothole in Derbyshire. 245 foot, uh, measures 110 feet in length and 20 foot wide. That's a hell of a drop. Let's see if I can uh, extend my camera and get out there a bit more. If you can see down there. So, yeah, 110 foot uh, wide. Uh, um, there's a 60 foot pile of stones at the bottom, but you can't get it, it's all fenced off and whatever. They used to believe this was a bottomless pit, but the devil um, sort of lived at the bottom of it. That's quite a common sort of myth of fairies and the devil. There's a legend that says that an old woman's goose flew down there and came out at the peak cavern with all its feathers singed because it had been through the fires of hell. So that sort of thing, so you can see how that happens, can't you? Um, there's a guy called Charles Cotton, he was lowered down the hole on a rope and they reckon it was a mile long and he still didn't reach the bottom. And in Elizabethan times, the Earl of Lancaster, the Earl of Leicester, sorry, had a man lowered into the depths and when he was found to be unconscious when he was raised out and he died soon afterwards. So, you know, all of that sort of thing goes around. But in the 18th century, they sort of proved it was only 60 yards deep. Uh, quite regularly descended by potholders, but still considered to be quite dangerous. Whether that's because of the, the depth or whether it's just the rocks and the overhangs. But yeah, that's pretty cool, that. If you look here as well, 
the bird is using this as a post. Look at all that there. That's a regular sort of roosting post for a bird, maybe an owl or something like that, maybe. That's quite cool. So on that note, going found the deepest toll, we're going to go up here now, to up here right behind the hole to uh, Eldon Hill. We should get some cracking views there, have a bit of lunch, and I'll decide where we're going. Because I want me to go to the second place, which is the Giant's Hole, so it won't be three freaking quid with me. Oh, no, nightmare. Anyway, we're going to head up round here. Look at this gate. I don't think that would have stopped you, would it? <laughs> but, uh, you know, actually, I might just uh, maybe climb over that fence and see if I can get a better shot down it. Right. Oh, yeah, look. That's huge, isn't it? Go to the edge, just make sure you don't fucking fall in. Wow, yeah. Look at that. Man, that is one deep hole. Went down there, mate. You can see why they thought it was bottomless. Look at that. That's cool. I'll get some pictures of that. And then we'll head off to the top of the hill. Yeah, you can see there's a bit like an anchor point, probably for when they go down the hill. Although there's a fence here, so maybe that's just an old one. But we're going to head up here now, a bit of a climb up to the top. And now look, you go down that way into the hole. Cool. Oh, we found that. Thought maybe it was difficult to find. Let's just trek up to the top there. These beautiful little purple flowers, I'm not sure what they are. I'll check out, Gus. There is a flower around here called Jacob's Ladder, which is purple. But I thought it was bigger than that. But you never know, it's the right time of year. I'll check it out. So, I'll catch up with you shortly. A big crevice there, look. All fenced off. Playing all mine work and it's collapsed or something. But, uh, top's just here. Here we are, Elders on a Hill, a cairn on the top. Stunning views. Everywhere towards Stanage and Derwent Tedge in the background over there. That's Derwent Tedge, sorry. That's Stanage. Mantor, all along this kinder there, Russia Page. South Head. Chinley Churn, you can just see the quarries where we were last time. All the way over there towards Shining Tor and Irwood and the Goy Valley, Coombs Moss. Camp Fiddles over that way behind Shining Tor. That's um, Beak Forest. Dove Holes will be over that way. Buckton's over that hill. Over that way you're looking towards Sir William Hill Trick Point and uh, Eam, Breton, all that sort of good area. But I'm going to get a few drone shots now before anybody else turns up. Well, that was a nightmare. <laughs> the drone came back and got caught with beard. <laughs> Rather prop shafts. Pellet shafts. Jesus, mate. That was a close call. I could have been a bit... Uh, they didn't warn you about that in the safety instructions, did they? Getting your beard trapped in the, in the propeller. Such a roll time. Not too bad, but now we're out of the wind. For the treat though, I weighed myself this morning. I lost eight pounds. And my blood pressure's dropped from 160 over 105 to 135 over 85. So that's probably not far off normal now. So uh, yeah, quite pleased with that. So I'll keep on doing it. A bit of walking and watching what I eat. And there's a little skylark there. Oh, listen. This is also a tumulus, which will be Bronze Age burial barrow. barrow. They apparently have um, sort of uh, dug it up and whatever, and they found like jewellery and, and that sort of thing, burial sort of relics, bones and stuff. So yeah, again, 
they always seem to be on these spots, don't they? Because see that over there? I don't know if you can see it, but it's on the top of the house, a little mound there. That's um, Lord Seat, which is another burial mound. So they always seem to be on these hills like this, don't they? If you look over to Coombs Moss, right on the edge there, uh, is an Iron Age hill fort. So this, high, this area was a whole hive of uh, Iron Age, Bronze Age activity and Romans were here, everybody's been up here, quite popular. Some hang gliders over on um, Mam Tour as well as paragliders, don't really see that so much. So I took a few pictures of that. We're going to head down now. What I might do is head back a little bit the way I came and then cut back over to the, what's the name farm, Russia Bedge Farm on the top there. I think that's what it's called anyway. Go and check them on that. Let's get my facts right. Oxlow House, yeah, down to there. Then perhaps down, back down when it's past, something like that, I think. That's what I'll do today, because there's no point in going to Giant's Hole if I can't get in. Or well, Cook's, we'll have some like I'm stoked then. Cook's Cairn there. I'll try and find out a bit more info about that. I'm just going to wander over here, have a look at the uh, disused quarry, then we'll head back. Yeah, I can't really see much of it, but you can see there's quarries there. It's a big old quarry if you've ever seen it from the road. But it's all barbed wired off. That's quite a big old quarry that. Oh, people used to walk along here by the looks of it, but they fenced it all off. Maybe that some planks fell off the edge of some that will hurt themselves. If you fell off there, make me dead, look at it. Cool like that, isn't it? I've tried all sorts like nature reserving it and all sorts, I think. So we can get a better view off, it, off here. Yeah, look at that. Superb. But anyway, we're going to head down here. I'll see if I can get a better view down there, actually. That looks like it's been capped off with concrete. So let's have a wander around here because it's a big old quarry. Bigger than you think looking at it. I might get a better view of it down this way. Look at that. You can see the foe far better now. Look how big that is. Someone's done a giant cock. <laughs> oh yes, that's the sort of thing I'd do. I'm going to take a picture of that. But look how big that quarry is, and it goes right around here, right around there. We'll have a walk back over here in a minute. But look at that, huge. But yeah, <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Okay. Anyway, we'll crack on now. Anyway, and I'll catch up with you in a bit. Yeah, fantastic that quarry, isn't it? <laughs> that penis that someone had built. It wasn't just a penis, I did a zoom in shot and uh, it was actually when you were at school and it used to ejaculate out the end. Well, yeah, we've gone to quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of effort there, mate. 10 out of 10 for that one. <laughs> anyway, made me chuckle. We're going to head back up here now, head back up onto that track. So we're going to cut across where those sheep are in that field. You can tell the weather's changing. It's trying to get quite a bit of cumulus, cumulus cloud build up now, which you can get, but later in the day it tends to dissipate. But starting to build up now, so the cirrus stuff is disappearing. Sun sort of behind a hazy cloud. That normally tells you the weather's going to change, the wind's picking up, and that's changed direction as well. Sort of coming this direction, which is a sort of southeasterly. This morning it was southwesterly. So yeah, learning all that from this book I've read, it's really interesting about using signs to try and predict weather. Obviously it's only ever going to be short term weather. But yeah, it's a really good book that I'll put a link up and a bit of a picture up um, by Tristan Gooley. It's quite a good guy to read, actually. There's a lot of this nav natural navigation and stuff like that. So it's really interesting stuff. Anyway, we're going to follow this sort of contour line around here and then we'll get over this fence somewhere and then head up back down over to that path you can see in the distance. So what this is, looks like an old sheep pen or something. I thought I saw a bird of prey doing some right acrobatics in this quarry which normally would smack of something like a peregrine. Now, whether it is or not, I don't know, but it was certainly pulling some stunts, but as soon as I got the camera out, it vanished, as they always do. <laughs> anyway, follow this fence line. If I remember rightly, you can cut through this field through a gate. I think the wind's done for that. They've had the sheep, the lambs quite uh, late up here. There's quite a lot of young ones in this field. I guess they've spread them out a bit, don't they? Yeah, that's gone. 
Oh, look at that skull. I always want to find one with horns on, you know. Never get a chance. They're still at the jumping stage, at least. That one was bouncing around then. Thank you, mate. Are you bouncing around? Oh, oh. <laughs> horns on that uh, one. Yeah, we're gonna head up it's straight across here. This one's lost the front end of the car. Four before. Oh back end, sorry, front end. Back end of the car there. Just left it. <laughs> Brilliant. Anyway, we're heading up over here now, down to where it's past. The side of this mine here, look at this. I'll tell you what. Yeah, I've not heard so many skylarks in my life. This place is a hotbed. Benchmark. I put that on Twitter. There's a whole thing about benchmarks. So that's going to get a picture of it. Great Ridge, Mamtor, Collins Cross. You can see the path up to there. Along to Backtor and Lose Hill. Absolutely stunning. Always takes my breath away when I see that. But we're going to head down here to the right, down when it's Pass. But yeah, what a good. No wonder it's so popular. You can just park over there with wind. Uh, Mam Nick and walk up, so that's why it's so popular, I think. But anyway, we're gonna head this way. Skylark. It's absolutely round. This is when it's pass, which was an old undersea cavern that collapsed probably about 300 million years ago. This was all like a big lagoon, like a shallow lagoon, like you see in like you know the tropics and Bahamas and atolls. So this is all like you know fossilized, you know sea creatures and corals and stuff. Quite good for fossil hunting apparently. But yeah, that's what this was, and this is where it, this is a cave that sort of collapsed in on itself. many nooks and crannies down here. So that goes in. Some pants and everything. Loads of these. There's one down here called the Suicide Cave. We'll have a drop into that. I'm trying to find out why it's called that. Last time I looked I couldn't find anything on it, but apparently that's what it's known as. That's a devil's elbow, which is a good scramble if you're ever into that sort of thing. I think we'll go through some fucking effort to put shit in here, don't they? Well, that was a cool walk. Didn't bother filming in the village. It was absolutely rammed. What a nice sort of seven and a half, eight mile an hour walk, that. Saw Eldon Hole, Eldon Hill, and a few bits of wildlife knock about. So quite a pleasant walk. Bit warm, but now back home. So I'll catch you on the next one.